Hey everybody, it's Steven. Um, so I wanted to talk a little bit about um, the, the Hearst Arts accessory molds. Um, I've seen a lot of people cursing these molds. Um, they are very, very hard to to get out um, of the molds without, or to get clean castings without bubbles. And I'll give you that. Um, it's it's very, very difficult. Uh, we've been running a bunch of the uh, pieces through. Um, with the smooth cast 300 so that they're plastic uh, the plastic is way less susceptible to um, to bubbles that we found we use the glass method where you pour um, the smooth cast in there and then put the glass over the top instead of scraping it what that does is when you put the glass on it pushes all the bubbles out and it presses them up to the top and then they carry across and you push the literally push the bubbles across the surface and out to the end and so we've had a really good success with that um, the only thing about that that I don't like is that you then have to use a plastic primer. It's it's very hard to get them out. It's it's hard to glue the pieces. It's hard to paint the pieces. Um, but anyway, I found um, one thing that I'm <laughs> I really like. I'm doing with the mold. We'll make um, the books and the book shelves. And then my wife makes these little bottles, little potion bottles, out of seed beads and little decorative beads. And so I wanted to show you guys what we've been doing with it. And they've been selling pretty well on Etsy as well. And so the um, the let's see, there's several different molds. I'm, I'm, I'll have to put them in the description. There's several different molds that have the bookshelves. But so basically, there's the full size bookshelf. Um, so that's it put together and painted. So got the nice wood grain on it. Wood grain all the way around, top and bottom. So you can use it however you'd like. But basically, there's three um, of these shapes. Uh, this piece and you glue it so there's one two three of those pieces and then a cap on the end so you can see that that cap there uh, but it makes it look very very uniform you can tell from the back there's three pieces let's see there's the three pieces and then a cap on the top um, pretty easy to paint you just use your standard uh, wood painting method on that so I use a black spray paint base then I use a chocolate or, or a, a melting chocolate brown then I use a kind of nutmeg which is in between it's a light brown and then I use a khaki as the top layer on that uh, either khaki or, or a butternut one of the two and so you get several different layers of brown on there it gives you a really nice wood grain and then the other side so that's that's the large bookshelf and then this is the small bookshelf so the exact same size same size shelves um, just shorter so it's not as long um, and that's the one that um, we cast the most of because we use a lot of things out of that same mold uh, again I'll put the mold numbers down in the descriptions um, but what we've done is my wife has started making these cute little bottles and you can see they look just like little bottles but they're just beads super glued together with a stud going through the middle of it and I'll show you some more here Let's see if I can. So you can get these little decorative beads. Um, she makes jewelry anyway, and so she has lots of decorative little beads that she can use. You just add a seed bead to the top. So there's one there that's kind of oops, a little Celtic bottle. Um, you've got stuff like that. You've got really round ones. I think these are kind of cool looking. So a really round bottle. And it's got a little tiny cap on the top, so you can see that little tiny cap on the top. Um, then you've got like really bright ones with silver tops on them. So, really, really bright ones with silver on top. I'm sorry about my fingernails, I do buy my fingernails. So, uh, <laughs> let's see. So, lots of different, you've got little frosted bottles with a really shiny silver top. And so, you can see what they look like. Here's a pair, there's another bookshelf over here. And so, you can see what they look like when you put them together. It looks really, really good. And it's it's perfect scale as well. So pretty easy to do. It takes just a few minutes. And then the other thing that you get out of the accessory molds are books. And so here's some of the books painted up. And I paint the little little pages as well. And so you've got the taller books. None of the tall books. You can see there's a little book in the middle, and then the rest of these are considered tall books. So they're small or large or short or tall. Um, they don't actually fit on any of the shelves, but I, what I do is I put them on, on top. And so I have a set on top, and then I take a set of the little books. So there's a set of little small books, and I do different orientations with them so they all look different. 
and see so you put that right there on the shelf. So put that on the shelf. And so then that's the result that you get. And you can do different variations. So there's a variation with the open book. So you can see the open book there. Um, so that's what that looks like. So anyway, um, and the method for painting these um, books is the bookshelves again are just a standard wood grain painting. Um, the books, what I do is I use some Reaper paints, and I'm sorry, not Reaper paints, just standard acrylic paints. I tried using the Reaper paints and they didn't work that well. Um, so standard like cheap um, Americana or folk art um, acrylic. I put one drop of basically make a wash uh, if you know how to do that, but one one little drop of the acrylic paint in my palette and you've got in little small palettes that you can use so they have the dips in them plastic dips and so i'll put one drop of acrylic paint in there and then um put the fill the rest of the palette with water so probably a one to ten ratio and then uh, mix that together and you know you've got it right when you paint up the side of the palette and then all the paint goes falls back down into it so you're not able to paint the plastic with it basically and then what will what will happen is you dip your brush in there touch the tip of your brush to the paper towel and it will pull all the excess wash out of the paintbrush so that you have just enough left to paint over one of these books. So then you paint a book, kind of wash it in the color and it will look like it's not going to come out because it's so thin um, but what you'll end up with, and I base coat these brown and then paint with them uh, or then paint them and so you end up with just an old antiqued wash and honestly see you've got, I've got a bubble in that one right there even if you've got the bubbles in there, it's not that bad because they look like antiqued books. It looks like a piece of the binding is torn off or a piece of the page is torn off. And so you'll get these very muted colors. I think it just works perfectly. So there's kind of a, a reddish color, a greenish color. It's not, you don't get an actual color, it's just a wash. And then what I found works best, and, and everybody um, has different preferences. So this one I can I actually do a little bit of writing inside there so you can see uh, the writing on the book. What I found works best, I tried painting the pages. You can see there's tiny little pages that you have to paint. Um, and it doesn't really look right if you don't paint them. So there's a, a stack of books uh, there. So that's what they look like from the front. And then that's what they look like from the back. And so you really do need to paint the pages because it just really, really gives it that finished look. Even when they're on the bookshelf, you can see the little tops of them. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect because you're not going to be staring at that in detail because it's so small. Um, so that's what it looks like on the shelf. But you can see just the very top of those pages. And what I've found works best, and I've tried several different methods, is um, this Reaper. Um, it's in the Master Series paint, the core colors. So um, that's the uh, Reaper Core Colors. And then the color is Polished Bone. And I found that I can paint, so here's a batch of books. Oops, they're hard to grab onto, they're so small. So here's a batch of books that I did. So you can see, that's how many books I painted up. That's enough for two orders. Um, so our order on Etsy is you get three bookshelves and then um, basically five or six sets of books and then some potion bottles as well. And so that's enough for two orders, and enough for two orders, um, it took one drop of Reaper paint. So one good drop, and that's what I love about these bottles. So you can put out one nice size drop, like that. And that is enough paint to, if you use a very, very small brush, um, all you do is you find a brush that's basically the width of these pages and then you get stick a little bit in there, wipe off the excess on paper towel, and then run around and down the edge. So across the top and down the edge, and then across the top and down the edge. And each brush stroke, you should be able to do um, a, a full book, basically. Um, and so for 40 books, you've got 40 different strokes that you have to um, take to finish that. And, and so far, I've been able to do that because the Reaper paint and the thinness of the Reaper paint is what makes it work because when I use acrylic paint, it actually covers up the detail of the pages because I don't know if you can tell on this, but you can actually see the individual pages in here. That's how cool the, Bruce, the, the uh, Bruce's Herst Arts uh, molds are. You can see the individual pages, but if you use acrylic paint, what I've found is that it covers up those details. And so it kind of washes over and fills in the gaps. But because the Reaper paint is so thin, um, and I don't add any water to it, just straight out of the bottle, it's so thin that it actually 
you're able to push the paint across those pages and you can still see the texture of the pages. So, um, and then as far as the bottles go, um, I'll probably have Crystal do a video about this so she can show you exactly how to make them. But you basically take an earring stud. Um, I don't know if you can see that in the top, but there's a metal stud in the top. And so it has a stud and then a, a pin on it. And so you take that pin, you put super glue on it, then you drop a seed bead, then you drop the regular um, bead, whatever decorative bead you'd like to use, uh, with super glue on the pin again. So everything gets um, put into place, and then you snip the end off of that stud. And so there's a metal rod right through the middle. There's a little metal cap on it, and the seed bead and the decorative bead. Um, so anyway, that's a cool project. It can seem very intimidating, but it's very easy to do, and it just makes a huge difference in your dungeon because you can walk into like a library setting and then the walls can be covered in bookshelves and you could you could do enough of these bookshelves and books and bottles probably in a weekend to cover a library scene easily um, so it can seem very intimidating but it's not just jump in and do it um, and so and again I'll post the molds that you need to reproduce these below or you can pick them up on our Etsy store if you'd like to do that and they're already pre-painted and ready to go so um, all right, until next time, if you have any questions, please uh, leave those in the comments below and I'll make sure to answer those. And then uh, like and subscribe. And until next time, see you.